Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to be doing a review of my Tau Tau Raptor 200 ATV. I've had this thing for just under a year and I've really kicked the crap out of it so I figured I'd make my own review. It seems like a lot of the bigger brand name ATVs are going up in price with the demand that there is and I feel that a lot of people are thinking if a Chinese brand ATV is worth the money. I'd like to mention, uh, I've been getting a few questions about the Audi. I haven't abandoned it, I'm just trying to get the shop put together here so I can pull the car out of storage and pick back up on it. So we're going to get into it here. We're going to break this video down into three sections. First, I'm going to go over the basic features of this ATV, and then I'm going to go over the problems that I've had. And then at the end of it, we're just going to talk about how it rides, how much power it's got, top speed run, and anything we can do to improve the way that it performs. So we'll start right off with the engine. It's advertised as a Raptor 200 being a 200cc engine, although in the owner's manual it states that it's actually 169 cc's, but in the brochure again it states that it is 200, so I don't know which one to believe, I'm guessing the 169 would probably be the proper one. It is the GY6 engine and is connected to a CVT transmission with reverse. It is also equipped with a remote start, although the remote start does not work unless the key is in the on position. I don't know if this is a wiring issue, if you can have it so that the remote start module has power all the time, or if it's just the way that this thing was designed, I wouldn't be surprised. It also has a lock and unlock feature for some kind of anti-theft, but again, the key has to be in the ignition, turned on for that to work. So. It is a pretty neat feature to have, but it's kind of useless, so there's that. Next, we'll move on to the cluster. It does have a digital fuel level indicator, which is nice, but it doesn't seem to read too correctly when it starts getting below a quarter tank. It kind of fluctuates a little bit, but at least it has it and it is usable. It also has your basic speedometer. It's also got a tack on the bottom and your gear shift indicator. Then we got the headlights. This is the first thing you see when you look at the quad. It definitely gives it a more expensive look. It's also got a little red glow in behind the main bulb, so you, at a certain angle you get this little red hue shining at you. Now although they look good, they don't perform the greatest, but they work. They're lights and I mean, yeah, I wouldn't want to be caught anywhere in the dark with these things. So The main bulbs are in projector housings. And they have three modes. They have high beam, low beam, and strobe. Now there may be adjustments for the projector housings, which may help in light output, but I haven't figured that out yet. I've also got a winch on this thing. It's got its basic handlebar controls, and it works pretty good for what I needed to do. Now we'll move on to all the problems I've had with this thing. Now a lot of these problems can be blamed on whoever put this thing together. I did not buy this ATV, it came when I bought my house, it was part of the deal, so it could have been the previous owner, or it could have been the dealer that it was bought from. I would say with the odometer hitting about 150 miles, I go to hit the rear brake, and there's no rear brake whatsoever. I go to look at the rear caliper, and the caliper is just hanging over the axle. Turns out both of the caliper bolts backed completely out and fell out during riding. Luckily, the piston did not come out of the caliper, and I could just throw two new bolts in it and away I go. Now moving on to the front end. I noticed that there's a few grease nipples missing, which isn't a big deal, they can be replaced, but I just gotta go out and get them and put them in, so it's just a little bit of a nuisance. The first couple of times I rode it, it felt like the steering was a little bit loose, so I flipped it on its side and just shook the wheels back and forth and noticed that the upper ball joints have this bit of adjustment in them and none of the nuts were tight. So I just went ahead and snugged those up and everything seemed to be okay. Now after about 300 miles of riding, I've noticed there's some play in the inner tie rods that connect the steering shaft. Now it isn't play in the joint itself, it's actually play in where the stud goes through the plate and the nut tightens it up with the cotter pin. It doesn't seem like it was tight enough or the mounting holes either worn out. So either way, take that cotter pin out, tighten that nut up and all should be good. Another problem I've had with it is when you're going through any kind of loaded terrain like deep snow or mud, when you're really loading up that rear axle, you get this snap, like almost like the chain skipping or something. And I thought it was a CVT belt, but what I found was there's a bolt that goes in like the rear trailing arm or the rear axle arm has come loose. And when you push the gas, it pushes the axle completely forward into the ATV and it just gives it a whole lot of chain slack and that's not good either. So I've had to tighten that one up a few times and then the last time I just reefed on it really good because I was sick and tired of it coming loose and it's been holding 
for about 100 miles now, so we're good on that, I feel. Now we'll move on to the problems with the exhaust system. When I first started riding it, I've noticed that the exhaust was getting louder and louder. Uh, when I looked at it, I found the two bolts that hold the exhaust pipe to the head were actually coming loose. All I did was tighten these two bolts up and it's been good ever since. Moving down the system, you'll find this black rubber hose that kind of comes off the side of the exhaust pipe. Now what happened, one day I was riding and I noticed again my exhaust was getting louder and louder. As I looked down, I can smell a rubber burning and noticed that the hose was split. Now I'll take some of the blame for this one. I've had this thing pinned for about 10 minutes, just beating the crap out of it. I'm really hard on it, so uh, I had the exhaust glowing red. And I don't know if it was glowing because it was so cold out and maybe it was running lean. But a rubber hose on a hot exhaust pipe doesn't seem like it would last a long time anyways. Plus side, after reading around, it seems that this hose can be removed and that hose be plugged. So there's no longer any future issues with that. From what I can find, that is just some kind of emissions control device. But I'm not 100% sure I haven't looked too far into it. Now a new problem that's popped up is that the speedometer has actually stopped working. Now the way the speedometer gets its signal is from an optical pickup which works off of reading the holes in the rear chain sprocket. It was giving me issues here and there on and off and then it just completely died and it seemed that it happened when it would ride out in the snow and the thing is this thing's not stored in a heated garage so it's always got this ice and snow compacted in there so i don't know if water got in to that pickup i might have to just replace the sensor because if i try to bend it and try to re-aim it it still doesn't work at all so i'll probably have to replace that next problem i had is a thumb throttle it was getting very hard to push i found that the thumb throttle shaft bore was worn out and it wasn't holding the shaft straight these things are all over Amazon, so I just ordered one and threw it on. First time I decided to wash the ATV, I used a pressure washer. Like I didn't go super close or anything, but it easily just took the paint right off the body. So next time, probably just want to use a hose, maybe a soft mint and just wipe all the dirt off of it. So now we'll just see what it can do for a top speed. I just connected my phone to the handlebars there because the one on the speedometer on the ATV wasn't working. So I'll just use my phone GPS and let's see what it can do. So we get up right around to about 35 miles an hour. Now in the summer I can usually get maybe a few more out of it but nothing too crazy. Now right across the street from us is we have a, a motocross track and they have about 20 miles of trails there. And I've had it through there, like it goes plenty fast enough. It's not like crazy but you can still have fun. Uh, the only problem with it is that in the deep snow it kind of has a bog almost where you get the tires to the point where they want to start spinning, but it just can't overcome it. I think if I pulled some weight out of that primary clutch in order to make the RPM come up a little bit higher before it started moving, it'd be able to get past that point and pull through it a little bit better. So I'll end it off there by saying, if you haven't drove a brand name ATV, you're probably gonna have a good time on this thing as long as you can put up with the mechanical quirks of it. It'll probably do what you need it to do, like a light duty type of thing around the house. Again, as long as you're willing to keep up on the maintenance on it, that's gonna be a big thing. In my opinion, if you could hold out a little bit and maybe get a brand name machine, you're gonna save yourself a few headaches and you'll have a more enjoyable ride. If not, you know, this thing does the job, but again, you get what you pay for. And if you have the time to keep up on it, it's fun, you know, I, I don't worry too much when I ride it because it is not really of much value. So, you know, I, I, I push it to the limit and I have a good time. If you have any questions or if you feel that I've missed something in this video, leave a comment below and thanks for watching.